Hey, what is up, Cinema Masters? Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another cinematography breakdown. In this video, we're gonna be breaking down a couple of scenes from the same commercial that we did last time, but showing you a couple of dark interior scenes that we shot and just kind of walking through some of the formula that we went through in order to shoot both of these scenes. So let's go ahead and jump into it. <music> So this is the first scene here where we've got a table in a nice workshop setting. The table is actually the subject or the product of this video. It is for a woodworking company. This is kind of makes this interesting because most of the time in cinematography, when we're lighting scenes, we're, a lot of times we're lighting people. And there's a formula for how to light people and how to make them look flattering. Well, in this case, we're not lighting people. We're lighting an inanimate object. And it's interesting, I'll walk you through kind of how this works, but the formula is still the same, even when you're lighting objects, okay? So you'll notice that a lot of the same things will apply as we're going through this. So first things first here, we've got our main key light just right up here uh, where you can kind of see this big ball of haze happening. We've obviously got the room filled with a lot of haze. This is an aperture 120D, open face. There's no diffusion on it or anything, just pointing straight. We've got a nice hard light coming on this table. This is of course being reverse keyed. So we're lighting from the back, which is allowing us to get this really nice contrast between the light and the shadows. Now we've talked about this in past videos, but that contrast is what makes the video interesting, which makes it look nice. So you can see we've got this nice contrast between the uh, legs here and this light on the ground. And then you can see the front of the table is in shadow and the top of it is just getting that little bit of light right here on the top of the table. Now we're creating that effect by backlighting the table. Now we don't want the front to be completely in shadow or completely silhouetted, so we do have another light over here. There is actually over on this side of the frame, we've got an aperture 300D with a light dome on it and then an eight by eight silk. So we're getting some really nice soft light coming this direction. And you can kind of see how that's filling in on these table legs a little bit. There's some of that light happening here. There's a really tiny amount happening over here. But basically like if we didn't have that light filling in the shadows a little bit, all of this would be completely in shadow, completely black, and the table would be completely silhouetted. So what we're doing with that is just creating a little bit of fill light, a little bit of detail in the shadows just to give us a little bit richer image. Now, another interesting thing that's happening over here is you'll notice that we've got our 120D up here and then we've got this interesting drill press actually in front of the light right here. The reason that that's there is actually because the light is sitting on a C-stand. In fact, you can see the legs of the C-stand right here and right here. We needed something to cover it up. And so um, this is kind of a tip, like if you're in a situation where you can't move a C-stand or you're not able to move your lights out of the way, you can always cover it with something. <laughs> and so that's what we did here is we moved the drill press in front of it and then also took this little floor tile right here and put it in front of it as well, just kind of block that out. That gave us this really interesting light on the ground here, which was actually an accident. This was not on purpose. Prior to having this, everything was just kind of lit over here. And I was actually really happy. It was kind of like a, happy accident, if you will. On to the background here. You'll notice that we've got a couple lights lighting up the background as well. And this is a really important aspect of this scene especially. So over here, we've got a light there. Over here, we've got another light over here. Now, if these lights weren't here, our entire background would just be black, okay? It would just be dark. And we'd end up with an image that, well, two things would happen. One is you would lose a lot of the depth. So we've got this really nice depth in this room. Uh, we're shooting into the corner of the room, which is about back there. So if you think of like two point perspective, that's the corner of the room. We're shooting in that corner. We've got this nice depth, but if it was all black back there, we'd be losing that depth and this wouldn't feel as dynamic. So having those lights back there is helping kind of create that depth. The other thing it's doing is helping just maintain the exposure of the scene. So without those lights, it would be completely pitch black back there. And this scene would look underexposed, honestly. And that's the thing with exposure is, you know, when you're lighting dark interiors or even exteriors, exposure is not so much about getting your levels perfect. It's, it's okay to have dark levels. Like, you know, you'll hear people talking about the histogram, right? Where your histogram looks like this and they'll say, you know, when you're, when you're lighting for your histogram, you wanna have, you know, a hump in the middle like this. So most of your data is in the middle. And this is just really not true because 
in a dark scene like this, it certainly doesn't look like that. And this doesn't look underexposed. And, and so you really have to think about like, well, what really causes something to look underexposed? So this scene, for example, your histogram is gonna look, you know, something like that, right? We've got a little bit of highlights up here on the top, but most of it is in shadow and that's okay. If you wanna shoot dark scenes, you can. Now, if we didn't have these lights here, okay? This one here, this quasar, and this quasar right here, well, then our histogram would look like this, okay? It would just be a hump on the left side of the histogram, okay? And so if all of your values, all of your data is over on the left side, then you're gonna have an image that looks underexposed. So good exposure when it comes to dark scenes or any kind of scene is not so much about having everything in the middle. Uh, certainly everything doesn't have to be exposed at 50%. The real strategy is to just make sure that you have a good range of tonal values. So if you're shooting a dark scene, which is a question that I get asked a lot, how do you shoot a dark scene and make it still feel properly exposed? If you're shooting a dark scene like this, just adding one or two little bright highlights, little pockets of light in the background can save your image from feeling underexposed. So these little lights back here are giving us you know, this pocket of light there, another little pocket of light right here. And we've got over here, there's a garage door that's open halfway that's just letting in a little bit more light over here. So that's giving us this really nice dynamic contrast, which is giving us depth and helping the scene to feel not underexposed. Moving on to the next scene, you'll notice as we're talking through this that we're using the exact same formula here as we did for lighting the table. So again, we've got kids sitting at the table, he's working late at night, getting some homework done. Another question I get asked a lot is, Eric, when do you shoot at blue hour and when do you shoot at night? Certainly when you want that blue kind of twilight look, that's when you wanna shoot at blue hour. This is a scene that's being shot at night. Anytime you're going for that effect where, as far as the story goes, we're trying to tell the story about a boy who's a college student who's just late at night trying to get things done, we want it to be pitch black outside. And that does have an effect because if there was even a little bit of light outside, you would see some of that coming through these blinds back here. And so because we shot this at night, we've got that completely blacked out. So you're not getting that, which is a good thing in this situation. So we're shooting a very dark interior. We're completely lighting everything from scratch. Now, what's going on here, same thing. We've got a nice soft uh, reverse lit key over here. So if you can imagine, you know, this is the corner of the room right here. Camera is shooting this direction towards the corner of the room and our light is coming from the opposite direction, which is our reverse key lighting or upstage lighting, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, so you can see that kind of playing on his arm right here and then a little bit on his face and his shirt as well. This up here is an Aperture 120D, again, with the light dome on it, which is giving us that nice soft light. We've got it kind of positioned, it's actually a little bit more about up there, I would say. We've got it positioned somewhat above him, trying to motivate the type of light that would be in a room like this. It would normally come from above, but we're bringing it down to that three quarter angle just to get a little bit more fill under the chin, get it just a little bit more flattering light on our subject coming from that direction. So just like the table scene that we shot before, we're reverse keying our subject. And then of course, in the background, once more, we've got little pockets of light, okay? So we've got a little lamp over here, practical, just a bulb in the lamp. And then same thing over here with this practical. Again, creating those little pockets helps add interest and depth to the background and just makes it overall more appealing. So there you go, there's a quick breakdown of a couple more scenes from this commercial. Again, the process for lighting a scene is similar regardless of whether you're shooting a human subject or an inanimate object like a table. It's all generally the same process, the same formula. Now, if you wanna learn more about how to approach this formula, this process in your scenes and know what to shoot where and where to put your lights and how to place them and what level to put them at, I do have a full masterclass on lighting called Lighting Secrets. I'll put a link to it down in the description below so you can check it out. If you're interested at all in creating work that looks cinematic and really has that uh, cinematic appeal to it that will make your work stand out, lighting is absolutely absolutely the key. And in the course, I walk you through exactly how to do it so that your work can just stand above the crowd and really have that cinematic look to it. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. We are a couple days away from Christmas. So wherever you are, whatever you're celebrating, I hope you have a great holiday season and enjoy the next few days, next few weeks with family, loved one, friends, 
whoever it is that you're spending time with. We will see you 